Hello and welcome to Squatters Wrongs. Um, and just this is just a quick thank you message to be honest. I've not even engaged that much with the channel over the last few months just because of, yeah, work-life balance. He's messing it up again. So I um, just haven't got the time really to nail it down and do all the adventures that I'd like to do. But, you know, we're getting there. So I've got a few videos lined up for you. But generally, I just want to thank you for clicking subscribe, sharing whatever you've been doing, because just whilst I've been away, it's the first kind of uptick in activity that's happened since the channel started. And um, it's nothing to do with the kayaking. It's not a fat lot. I mean, it is a fair bit to do with the Greyhound stuff, but it looks like the Birmingham history stuff is what's really took an uptick in the last few months. And um, God knows, I think this time, even a couple of months back, I was only chilling at about 30 odd subscribers. But now we're on 200 and something. So it's good fun. Thank you very much for even entertaining the idea of coming back to the channel. It does mean a lot. And uh, yeah, if you could share, like and subscribe and all that other good stuff. Apparently it helps. Uh, I mean, clearly something's happening. I'll, one day I'll take you through all the analytics and just show you what's just kind of happened out of nowhere. And it's not a major thing. It's just bizarre to see any form of kind of traction, which is nice because it's not been the case for ages and ages. So thanks for joining us. This is going to be episode one of uh, just walk it, dog walks in the city. Where we're just trying to find interesting routes for you to take especially around the, uh, the West Midlands area, but I'll branch out when and where I can. Uh, but yeah, interesting routes to take your dog, which are safe, you know, free of glass and all that kind of stuff, uh, but also visually deep, you know what I mean? Plenty of things to see. So this episode one is going to take us from like Witten Cemetery and we're going to go down canals, we're going to see Spaghetti Junction, we're going to see some more fields, derelict land, housing estates, lakes, parks, all kinds, and it's all within... Well, it's just one big circle. I will put a map up to show you the route. There's parking on route, so you could jump on at any point, really. And uh, go and enjoy it yourself and just go and see the prettiness that the city can dish up. Because, you know, the countryside's nice, but it can get a bit samesy samesy. And it's kind of the weather and the changes in uh, colours and plants and stuff that you're kind of waiting on there. Whereas uh, the city's just constantly changing. Uh, I'm not a pro city guy at all, but I'm working with what I've got. So, uh, yeah, episode one of... Um, Dog walks in the city. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing all that good shit. Um, thumbs up from me and Pippin. Hey, eh? let's do it. All right, welcome to walking your dog in the city. And I think you can get a lot more kind of fascinating routes than you would even out in the country. So I'm going to show you one of mine, which is local to me, and I'd say worth the visit. With mean, the amount of places I've drove 50 miles to go somewhere uh, to walk around something nice get there and realise it's actually kind of better at home. So I'm going to uh, expose some of these routes for you. I hope that you come and try them out because I think the amount of industry and different sites and scenes that you do see on routes in this particular area are bloody impressive. So I'm going to take you on a journey which starts just opposite Witten Cemetery over there. And you can see the M6 flying past the bottom of that. And just past that is the canal, which kind of links Birmingham to, you know, Alexander Stadium, heading towards Warsaw, West Brom. I can't remember the bloody canal line name, but that's the crack. So we jump on there next to the Marigold venue on uh, I mean Marsh Hill, Brookvale Road. Google it, it's right there. Here's a map. It's just down the road from the Villa Ground. So if you are a Villa fan, you've probably walked a lot of this already. If you have a dog, bring your damn dog around in the week because it's, I mean, what is it now? It's about one o'clock on a Tuesday and it's dead. So uh, I'm going to show you around and show you all the different things you can see. Plenty of history, plenty of new stuff, plenty of ignored stuff. So yeah, and the dog loves it. So here we go, City Dog Walks, episode one. All right, so we're coming up to the Marigold. Banqueting centre? Not really sure what it is, but it's just opposite Brookvale. Trading is say just next to the M6 flyover. We're on Brookvale Road now, I believe. And we'll just pop around here. So here you go. Allotments, the Marigold. Lovely. And there's an entrance to the canal just here. And it's the perfect place to start. Pippin's interested in something else. Pippin, come on, get 
Come on. Good lad. Right, this is uh, probably a route to keep your dog on the lead just because of the narrow paths and there are push bikers who use this. But if your dog's calm, then fine. So here you go. Canal sidewalk on Brookvale Road. Jumping on. Good boy. Oh yeah, there are steps. Make sure your dog's prepared for that. Come on. Nails it. Come on, Ed. So there you go, straight on to, on to canals. Uh, onto the cut. And I'm guessing it was kind of, this is one of the earlier canals, I think. So let's just say, I have a very late 18th century, fairly early 19th century. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? It, it picks up, it gets a little bit ugly. Obviously you got the fly tipping. We are in the city. So you'll count the mattresses. We'll do a mattress count actually. So there's one. Uh, all of this was full of blackberries, free fruit for the whole of uh, July, through to like the end of October. It was good. There were some patches where they didn't taste as nice. You had like round one of the first lot of really black and juicy boys and they were nice. And then when they've started to kind of not get eaten, but the bush wasn't growing new fruit because they were still there, the longer they sat on the branch, the sourer and kind of nastier they got. But then there was like a second wind when uh, loads more grew again, like really late October, and they were sweeter than the bloody summer ones, mate. I'll tell you that. Anyway, a bit of a greyhound update there. Uh, he's been absolutely wonderful. We got through summer. We had some crazy hot days, 40 degrees. Um, we didn't even, yeah, it wasn't a struggle this year at all for some reason. We had the fan on a couple of times. I just don't, actually, I did quite a lot of kayaking during the summer, so he did stay in quite a bit, staying chilled out. Whereas last summer, probably took him to a few too many places, but it was warm. So we're learning our lesson. Having a wee. Does your dog wee in a sports position? Let me know. I might just chat for this whole bloody thing. Long talk. Who's it? Walk with John. I've got his name. Is. Follow our, my YouTube page. Throws a lot of weird suggestions at me. And a lot of it is people walking around. There's a really good bloke. I can't remember, I can't remember anyone's name now. But there's a good guy who does like London tours. Uh, that's always fascinating and cool. There's someone, there is someone who walks around. Is it Jocelyn? He walks around Birmingham, uh, point of view kind of camera thing, just capturing all the various areas on just long play walk arounds, like real time. And they are bloody good, especially like the, when the, you end up on Broad Street. Um, and yeah, it's just rammed on a Saturday and she's just walking around and all the revelers are saying hello or whatever's going on. It's interesting. But I just want to add my little bit to the pile just show you probably a, you know some of the canal network which doesn't hit the the youtube or the tv i mean if you want to go back in time i don't know if you ever watched julia bradbury on the canals but she did walk the uh birmingham to worcester canal starting at the tap and spiral in town or brindley place if you know you know um but i don't think they came this way oh we've got some movement at fracino's this kind of coffee warehouse. It's an interesting unit on the left of it that looks like a massive tyre fire happened. But the general place survived, so good for them. Yeah, it's actually, I mean, look at the state of this, the infrastructure. So there's not a lot of industry going on anymore. So a lot of these abandoned buildings turn into just places to nail aerials to. Obviously you can charge the network carrier rent for that space. So that's probably, I mean, a lot of the houses and the kind of, yeah, just in the Witten area in general, uh, Lozells and all that, there's just a lot of abandoned 
buildings which aren't doing a fat lot probably used to have a taxi rank in them and now they're just aerials there you go what we the price we pay for fast internet and if i'm trying to show you this in glorious 4k you're going to need that fast internet so that's a shame isn't it yeah definitely a tire fire big pile of tires there interesting so like i was saying i don't know a fat lot about the history of this particular stretch until i get down towards Deakin avenue and that's where there'll be things you recognize if you go back in the channel and have a look at the wit and history the gec and all that did quite quite a compendium of information during the uh the lockdown I pulled a lot together. I mean, I watched it now and I forgot half the stuff I learned. And I, I'd say it was a bloody 10 out of 10 effort at least, even if some of it wasn't quite right or, you know, I've got the wrong end of the stick on some things. I think as a general rule, it's a very informative documentary. Let's go and have a look. And if that doesn't tickle your pickle, go and check out the Brookfield Cemetery. Um, Birmingham Jewelry Quarter kind of history video because that one's another one. Now, I just went to town on the information. Look at this madness. Bit of a crazy working garden here. <laughs> the canteen on the roof. Mannequins and that, very bizarre. I don't think anyone's using it anymore. And these cranes are actually new. I think it's a crane yard, yeah. So yeah, interesting. So we're hitting one of the landmarks of the route. Which is this little lock which is kind of nice with that solid green very weird um nice house deakin avenue bridge so this is all part of the old gec a lot of the housing was down here and kind of workers houses and stuff if he wants to go that way but no we go under a little gas line or whatever running as well yeah he's awkward bastard Hey, mate, you're right. All good, thank you. Hey, Pippin, slow. So yeah, that's a thing around here, like magnet fishing. Seems to have taken off with the local workers. It's looking clean. I mean, there was a big cleanup operation down here um, for the Commonwealth. So it did get raked and kind of, not dredged, but they, they took the cans away and kind of painted all the locks again so they weren't covered in graffiti. But alas, it all comes back once the game's finished. It's still rather nice, isn't it? So as we mentioned the GEC, there's the, uh, the chimney stack. Which is bloody beautiful, one of my favourite things in Birmingham. These are lovely. They're not the nastiest looking ladder, really. Looks like it's been clean. Or never used. There you go. Good lad. So yeah, this, uh, this is where the, the scene starts to change a bit. Like we leave the factories behind now, pretty much. And we're heading to slightly more historical things, new. Also like the newer builds as far as uh, warehouse and storage over here. But some of the, the histories this side, like this old sub house. What's this, the grid house, which is cool. The amount of effort and tech and time put into building the canals is absolutely mad. What a project. But at the same time, I, I often think uh, the M6 and build, building things like that, what a project. And yeah, there's people in our lifetimes who, who were alive when that weren't even an option. And no one seems to remember the days before the M6. I definitely take it for granted, you know, like the whole big uh, A38M that blasts through Old Salford, straight through whatever the hell used to be there. What, Wit and Lower Grounds and all that? And then blam, into town through a big kind of dugout gutter i don't know what you'd call it it's like yeah it's like a drain that they've carved out packed it with uh speeding 
signs and concrete. And bam, you've got your, your new way into town, the expressway. One of the, I think one of the most unique ish motorways in the country. It's like, a, it's a seven laner. The middle lane's live when it wants to be and it swaps sides and it's very, yeah, depending on the time that you're coming in and out of town, the priorities change. It's like the first smart motorway, really. Before all this like shitey locking the hard shoulder off and all that stuff happened, Birmingham was already pretty smart with its uh, traffic systems. Lovely scenes of the GEC tower there. You see the magnet on top, my favorite thing. Don't know if you can see it, I can't. It's bloody sun's in the way. So now we're coming up to Spaghetti Junction. Famous motorway junction, opened in 1972. I still think, can I remember if it was May 1972? I think it was. But yeah, cool thing. And now we're gonna move away from the scenes of, you know, now it's through uh, rose tinted glasses and how lovely this area looks. Whereas before it was pure industry, coal dragging, horses, horse shit, smoke, everything, nasty, nasty. Um, because now it's lovely. But the minute we pass this bridge, it all goes very industrial and infrastructural and oh dear but uh, you know that's the price you pay for uh, easy travel so we're gonna have a look at underneath spaghetti junction which you will have seen in some of my older videos but this is part of city dog walks which i recommend you do because you get to see quite a lot and even after this we're still going to hit some more fields before we hit a housing estate before we hit a, a play area before we hit a lake yeah, it's plenty to go. Plenty is going to be going on here. I'm not entirely sure how long the walk is. We'll measure it up when I get in and we'll bang it on the map. But it is basically a big square. So you go, you got the turnover bridge. I guess, is this gas lines that run over as well? There's like another bridge over there, which I think is just to get electricity over the water. So it's not for people, per se, and it says it's really dangerous and high voltage and all that. Here's your pylon. That's a new one. Come on, people, let's have a little nose. Come on. Good boy. So we'll, in another video, I'll go down that way and show you Aston Reservoir properly. With this wide angle. So you can actually see what's going on. There you go, there's a bit of, uh, what's that? That's the expressway. Oh, is that coming off the motorway? We'll figure it out. That thick boy in the middle must be the expressway, surely. I don't know. Well, we'll figure it out. So, we'll go back up towards, so this would be the magnet center. The GEC was this side of the canal. Magnet center and the, the workers there. This is where they're kind of a community centre, you know, drinking mess house. I don't know what you'd call it. Um, working men's club, probably. That's where that was. So here's the electric bridge. This has all been done up fairly recently. This was all closed off for the best part of two years. So when uh, COVID hit and you finally had some time to scout out the area and have a walk around, they locked off the best part. And to get to this area from, yeah, you'd have to, you'd have to go. I mean, I'll show you how quick I could get back to Brookvale this way. So before you'd have to go all the way back to that Marigold just to get on the canal or walk all the way to Salford Circus and get on behind Power League. Which, you know, I'm assuming you know what I'm talking about because if you're watching this, I'm assuming you're fairly local. There you go. Lot of stuff. All of this, it's basically a junction for the M6 North, the M6 South. Um, it'll send you over towards Birmingham on the A38M, or it'll send you on the A38 Standard, which will just send you towards um, well, Derby, Nottingham Way, or you get on the other side, follow the A38 through town and you'll end up in Worcester. But when you really think about it, it's not, a, it's not a lot going on but it's just basically peeling traffic from two two sides into four options is that what's happening here i don't know someone designed it someone pulled it off and it's very well done 
but now it's under constant repair. And um, my auntie has mentioned, um, I think, I think, uh, yeah, my uncle was involved in the build or he knew people in the build, Irish, one of those. Um, but yeah, but the piling wasn't quite complete. I mean, some of these have been sunk into the canal itself and some into the River Tame itself. And uh, they never quite hit bedrock, but it's floating there and it's all still standing. So who knows? But yeah, constant repair job just to keep the city moving. The city, actually, I think the whole country would probably grind to a minor halt if this, you know, something happened. There you go. Interesting. Okay, and this is gonna bring us out into what was, yeah, the old magnet center, the old working club for the GEC which is now a Greek Orthodox church building with a nursery and I think, I think that's all that really goes on. It's a bit of a banqueting centre as well, I think. It gets very busy on Sundays. All right, Pippin. All good. So we're going to go on to its playgrounds, which is like an old football pitch. I think there was a green rugby pitch at the top, bowling green, all kinds at the time. I know it's a little bit overgrown, it's not really overgrown. It's still kept okay, but it's not uh, managed, let's say. But it is nice. And just to say, all of this is perfectly accessible public footpath. So no worries there. We'll take the stairs. You can see the old stands and that. We put the effort in for the, uh, the footballers. It's a bit of a bleacher situation. Well, you know, some seating on stones. There you go. Here's the, the old magnet center. We actually have um, a repurposed World War One memorial, which is now a memorial for uh, 1974 in memory of those who founded and served the Greek Orthodox Church of the Holy, si Holy Trinity and St. Luke. Right, and it used to be, I mean, I'll throw a photo up, there used to be a World War I memorial. And the, uh, to be fair, the, the actual brass side had been lifted a long time ago. Brass, steel, whatever it was, iron. But yeah, so you go, repurpose. So then we take the immediate front steps. Oh, glass, come on world. Go on this way. Good lad. See it this way again. Lovely. Right, let's get a back shot. Is that what they call it? There you go. The magnet centre. Like I say, go back to the old videos and have a little look at the history of Witten and the GEC and all that. And you'll learn all about why that's there and why all this grass is here and what's hidden in the grass up there, which I'm not going to show you today. Have a wee. So yeah, this is the um, the next part of the walk, which brings you onto, and this is basically in real time. I'm not going to cut much out of this video. But yeah, onto these playing fields, which then takes you onto some kind of abandoned land, just next to the things. Which we'll show you around there. Oh, why is this guy always around? My God, every time, literally, this guy. This is the guy with the staffies, and they jumped Pippin a few months ago. It didn't end nicely, so we'll probably avoid that route. It's just, yeah, we'll cut the corner, we'll go up the hill. Right, bear with. Let's go that way. So, there's more footage to follow. We'll come back and do that bit. But for now, we're going off-road. And, and yeah, man, I'd say Greyhounds are very much 4x4s. There's not much he won't do when it comes to terrain. Oh, that's a shame. You turn the story there, you're going to see another couple of fields. The housing estate's a little bit out of the question now. That's fine. This is actually really cool. There's a nice hill to climb. It's very bizarre. So just for your bearings, we're just heading to the left. Stage left, is it? Of Witten. No, Magnet Centre, idiot. Come on, Pip. 
We're doing this way now. Good lad. It's a little bit overgrown, I'm guessing. As the winter comes on, less people use this fruit. So it gets quite stingy. Oh, it looks completely abandoned. No. Oh no, I'm looking at the wrong one. What a dick. Up here. Is it alright? It's alright. My laces are undone though. Not ideal. Oh, not sure how much I missed. I didn't mean to pause the video, but here you go. Greyhound hill climb. Wait a second. Go. Go on in. Oh, brilliant work, son. Nice. And it gives us a little pull up. What a guy. <laughs> Does your, does your Greyhound rock climb? Let me know in the comments. Okay, Pippin's choosing the route. Little foxy boy, isn't he? Just following the fox trail. Lovely bit of land, this was supposed to be built up and kept alongside the, the main Brookvale Park. So when they built that housing estate behind those trees, part of that included a payment to, to ensure the upkeep of this. And I think the plan was to make it actually accessible properly as a public park, but it never happened. But the money went somewhere. And this is just something I was told by a Labour representative <laughs> like two years ago. He's very pissed off about it. So there you go. Oh, I need a wee, so back in a minute. Quite a nice breathing to fish, isn't there? Lovely place for a piss. Anyway, yeah, this route's fine. Pippin's finding his way. Well done, mate. Well done. <laughs> okay, so now we're uh, exiting the wasteland and we are entering the public park. Opened in 1904. Called. Brookvale Park, or it used to be called Witten Lower Lake. Lower pool, lower pool. So there we go. Pippin spotted something he's not sure of. So we're gonna go this way. Good lad. Nope. Good boy. Okay. Get on it. Good boy. So you go park approach if you need any idea of where we are right now. North Park Road. It's a lovely place. Hidden just behind. I mean, you can hear Spaghetti Junction now, but you can't see it. But it still kind of blows my mind that anyone was given the nod to build a kind of housing estate, flats and that. And I think when they were first built, it was all like help to buy part ownership because no one really wanted them or could afford them in like the early 80s, late 80s. All the homes here are on like a thousand year lease. So nothing's due to change soon. So yeah, you just got, a, you know, so, and, and the people here are lovely and like everything's nice surprisingly nice um, and yeah like that's it they're kind of like what could have been Edgebaston 2 next to the brook and all that niceness I guess there was too much industry here at the time to pretend it wasn't tranquil so they, so they banked some housing on it instead which is understandable because you had like community tennis courts there was boating uh, bowls a bit of everything Proper car park, fishing, disabled access fishing, the lot, mate. But yeah, this actually isn't the route I was planning on going. It's a little bit shaving off the other side of the lake, which is just over there. You can see it, which I'll try and give get you a little view of. Be a shame to miss that after you've already seen the tire fire.
yeah, as I, as I said before, this whole walk is basically in real time. So if you've uh, managed to watch this whole thing, then you will in fact have completed the walk. It's what, 20 minutes? Not really sure. Feels like 20 minutes. There it is, let's have a look at the lake. Blackbirds are fucking up the grass. It's your time to whine. One really cool tree here. Hit by lightning, stripped and dead. And now left here is a little white Gondorian tree, which I like. Look at that. Lovely. Oh, it's a bit, it's a shame it's, a, it's choppy because it is quite a nice temperature for kayaking, gotta say. But a little bit too windy to be comfortable with it. So I will be repeating myself here, but because this is a walk and it should be interesting if you come and see it, um, that little island in the middle, which is now for wildlife and birds and fancy birds. You can see herons and all kinds. Just sat there chilling. I think you can see them. And a little swanny there, lovely. Um, but yeah, it used to be a road across this, or you know, a path at least. Uh, this used to be a forge mill pool. There was a pub here at one point too. We're talking like way beyond like 1850 or before that, maybe even 1700s there. Before that, who knows? There's still a really cool story actually in like a newspaper, I think it's late 19th century and it mentions a sinkhole and they call it a crown hole at the time and apparently it, could, like, it caused mayhem and it was somewhere over Marsh Hill Way, Bleak Hill, but something collapsed and all kinds of, I mean, there was a dam collapse as well and the whole down here flooded. Some crazy crazy stuff has happened in the past and nowadays it's, it's fairly stable, it doesn't really flood this end at all. Um, it got a little bit high on the water levels about two years ago. But I think someone was fucking with the, the sluice gates or something because it was a bit weird. And then it cleared in a day, so it clearly wasn't that big of an issue once it was fixed. But there you go. Becoming quite a known thing about how friendly the Brookvale squirrels are. They got balls, man. See, I mean, now the dog's just going to kick off at you. What do you want? What's he want? Do -do -do. Come on, then. Pippin unsure of the brave squirrels. Look at them. Look at him. Go on in. Pippin actually scared. Come on, man. You're dressed as one. They could barely tell it's you. The temptation to throw up historical photos of the area is high again. I've already done it like three times on this channel. So I might not treat you to that and implore you to go and look at the older videos. Um, Cause yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of information. And if I just skim over it now, I'm not only doing myself a disservice, I'm doing you a disservice. So I've already done, I've put all the effort in, go and watch it. Here's the link actually, I've never done this before. See if it works. Here's the link to that video. Um, I've never said this before either, but if you could like, share, and subscribe, which essentially means, could you, could you just validate my performance with your thumb? 
and then tell your mum about me and then sign up because no doubt you want to know exactly the minute my next video drops and of course there's no actual s s structure to this channel at all so there's no guarantee on whether you'll be getting a grey greyhound video next whether you'll get a city walks video whether you'll get a city history video whether i'll be sat in an inflatable kayak if pippin's just going to take a shit for you you know so there you go always pick up your dog turds please guys many bins available now not physical bins but they do tie a bin bag to every bench so there's no excuse and i see people not picking that shit up even then There we go, now you're going through a lovely little housing bit, all green and nice and managed. And this road will just bring you back to the Marigold, just follow it. There, right, I'm not going to tell you where I live. But, yeah, you're basically there. I'll finish off the, uh, the route on the map for you, so you can trim the last bit off yourself. It's not rocket science. Follow the sound of the motorway, honestly. On the board. So if you just want your uh, for reference for your bearings, that's Brookvale Primary School. On the map, which I'll circle if I'm going to be arsed. I'm setting myself up with a lot of editing here, I need to stop talking. But that concludes the walk, everyone. Follow the last bit of the map to sort yourselves out. It's literally a two second thing around the corner. But that's that, mate. One more way, and fuck whoever did this on the wall, eh? You idiots. That happened only like a month ago. Piss take, mate. It's a damn piss take. Ta-ta.